Hello everyone and welcome to episode 10 of the WMMA series of WMMA 5, Pride FC, near 2001 now, as it is Pride 15's Raging Rumble, as uh, we have, we're gonna look at the mail real quick, and then we'll run the goddamn show, let's see what we got, Big Nog is Little Brother, Little Nog is being signed, so we got both of the Nogueira brothers, as uh, just a little tidbit, if you're just like, which one's which? Lil Nog's gonna be the one that doesn't have a belt in his render, whereas Big Nog's gonna have one in his render. So, yeah, just kind of get confused throughout the series. Just remember that, and it'll be fine. Micro Crow Cup is signed with us. Holy fucking shit. Can't wait. Use this man of the man of death. I will take a bullet for this man if I had to. Even though he will definitely kill the man before he even gets the shot off. He's a bad motherfucker, but... Uh, that is gonna be awesome to see. Hopefully he does not get killed in his first couple of fights, as, uh, obviously, being a kickboxer, uh, you put him against the wrong opponent, he might get fucked over, so we're gonna try to keep him, protect him a little bit, until he gets his, uh, you know, gets his, uh, feet wet in the MMA world. Jimmy Horn and, I, and uh, Anderson Silva, we're gonna have a fight at Pride 16, Beast from the East, but, uh, yeah, uh, Jimmy Horn... Turned his spinal disc, which is very, very bad. He is out for at least a year, uh, I want to say. Ten months and three weeks. So, yeah, pretty much just under a year. But uh, that is uh, that is tough, because that was going to be a great fight. Not only for Jeremy Horn, for Anderson Silva to get a huge fucking fight in there. But I believe we rescheduled Anderson Silva for Guy Metzger. We did. So that is going to be good. Guy Metzger lost to Jeremy Horn, which you just saw. So that's why that's happening. But uh, Anderson Silva trying to, you know... Bounce back after a huge debut main event win in Pride against Hoist Gracie. Was or look at if he beats Guy Metzger there as uh, Alexander Utsuka extended his deal. Listen, sure he's two and six, two and four in Pride, but he did beat Masaki Sataki in the uh, first round of Kimura at the Pride 14 Clash for the Titan Show. So I mean, we gotta give him, gotta give him something. And uh, Ronaldo Sabral extended his deal, and Pat Militich, right after his fight, pretty much declared hiatus from MMA after his loss to Vitor Belfort, Pride 14's uh, Clash with the Titans, which I'm, I'm okay with, you know, uh, sure, it'd be nice to have him, but it's not a huge deal, so him losing to Vitor, if he would have beat Vitor uh, Belfort, that would have been a little different, but he lost him, so I'm kind of okay with it. That's just kind of where we're at, you know, signings-wise. I believe that takes us to, um, see, we'll look at the roster. 27 uh, heavyweights, 26 middleweights. Pretty much half and half. We still gotta add some fights to the Beast from the East card. As, uh, we need at least eight fights. We only have six. And then the, uh, Championship Chaos, which we, uh, we'll, we'll go into after the, uh, Pride 15 show. But yeah, without, uh, further ado, let's get into... Pride 15's Raging Rumble. What a goddamn show. Hopefully this will be. As uh, Yoshiro Takayama. Nobody get the cat of the main event. Andre Avlowski, Don Fry, Alexei Olenek, and Heath Herring, Fedor Emelianenko, and Gilbert Yavel, and then Murray Rua and Rodrigo Gracie, Ricardo Arona, and Yoji Anjo. Obviously that's just there for Ricardo Arona to beat somebody up. And then the prelims, Carlos Newton and Dennis Holman. And Alistair Overeem and Mike Bork. Uh, that should be a hell of a goddamn slugfest there. Alistair Overeem and Mike Bork. Mike Bork's always in, in, in some entertaining bouts. He just can't seem to get a win. As uh, there's a little overview. Not really as big as a card as it was last at Pride 14. Uh, Clash of the Titans. But this Pride 15 card. We got a fun main event. Yoshiro Takayama's debut. We shall see how it goes. As, uh, let's see, I hit next, I guess, oh, there we go. As, uh, Takayama, as, uh, this is, you know, Takayama's obviously Pride debut. This is Takata's eighth time made of inning on the Pride show. That is fucking crazy. Uh, pretty much half of the Pride shows have been made of in by Nobuyuki Takata. First time they have fought, of course, as Takayama will enjoy significant weight and reach advantage with a 7-inch reach advantage. And then the Blur Cat staff, heavy favorites for Takata. I think this could be an upset, though. But this is a definitely a huge fight as far as, you know, ticket sales and whatnot. As uh, Andre Avlowski, the pit bull, taking on the, the predator Don Fry. 
Fry has submitted three of his last five opponents. Arvlowski's won three of his last five fights by knockout. Uh, both are, are ranked in the super heavyweights, not even just the heavyweights, but the super heavyweights. Arvlowski's 12th. Don Fry's 17th. Don Fry, or uh, Don Fry's 20th, rather. Don Fry has not won since June of 1997. Literally a four year uh, hiatus of not winning a fight. He's still here, though, for pride, as, because he's a bad motherfucker. Look at that mustache, as. Everybody's got, for the Blair Cats, have Andre Blosky. They're probably right. As, Alexei Olenek, the boa constrictor, taking on the Texas crazy horse, Heath Herring. Uh, Alexei Olenek has finished four of his last five. Heath Herring's finished three of his last five. Super heavyweights uh, rankings. Heath Herring's ninth. Alexei Olenek is 16th. As uh, Herring's enjoying a significant weight advantage, betting odds have Herring in it as a huge, well, I guess a large, margin favorite, and that's why the Blair Cats staff have him 7-0. Against Alexia Linux. The Last Emperor, Fedor Emelianenko, against the Hurricane. Give it Yavel as uh, Yavel is ranked 13th in heavyweight pride division, while as Fedor is ranked 21st. But you see there, Blair Cat Steph have him 7 zip with Fedor. I don't think we have a, a fight yet that's been a, a split or anything where the Blair Cat Steph don't have it at unanimous vote. As, uh, again, another 7 0 fight. Merlio. Ninja Rua against Rodrigo Gracie. Uh, you know, kind of low down on the totem pole for the middleweight division, 17th and 22, respectively, for Rua and Gracie. First time they have fought. Rua's going to have a significant weight advantage. The betting odds have him as a huge margin win as uh, Rua 7 2 0. Uh, the Blurk has staff picks. And again, with no surprise here, uh, Ricardo Arona, Yoji Anjo. Ricardo Arona, 19th ranked middleweight as Yoji Anjo, 24th. It was uh, not one of fight yet in Pride. Ricardo Rona seven to zero, of course, no surprise there. As uh, then the Ronin, Carlos Dutton against Superman Dennis Hallman. Uh, this Dennis Hallman has a uh, significant weight advantage. This Pride debut, uh, you know, he's won his last five fights by decision. Dennis Hallman, while well, Carlos Dutton has won three of the last five decisions, so this is gonna go to the distance. Don't think it was gonna get knocked out, submitted. We'll see that the Blur Cats have to have Carlos Dutton the heavy favorite. 7 zip as then the prelims, the opener, the first ever fight happening. Alistair Overeem, Demolition Man, the Rhino, Mike Bork. Betting favorites have him as a huge margin as uh, the favorite there, Alistair Overeem. First time they have fought, Bork's got the significant weight advantage, but I don't think it matters really. Alistair Overeem's gonna look to knock him the fuck out. That's gonna be an awesome fight. Can't wait to see it, even though it's got Alistair Overeem as the huge favorite. Here we go. Can't wait to see it. <laughs> As, uh... Man, you know, this is... You saw from the card... A lot of heavy favorites. A lot of one-sided bouts. You see minus 1,200 against plus 950 for Mike Bork. 6'5", 240. 6'265". We shall see what happens. I'll referee Big John McCarthy. Probably the only man big enough in the world to referee this one. As a Muay Thai versus submission fighting style... As our judges, a major disadvantage for Alistair Overeem giving up 25 pounds. Round one begins. They stand in the train in the center of the ring, but neither fighter can land a good shot. Exchange of strikes seems sees both fighters fail to land anything significant. My God, they're just standing there not landing anything for a minute. That, now at least they're coming to blows, but it, neither can land anything damaging. And uh, he comes forward, does Alistair Overeem and the two fighters exchange strikes? Bork fires off a counter jab, but doesn't connect. Overeem comes in fast with four quick punches, landing four of them, and then hits Bork with a high right head kick. They stand and trade in the center of the ring, but neither fighter can land a good shot. Overeem comes forward on the attack. Bork throws a counter jab and misses, lands a left hand, and then lands a low kick to the legs, says Alistair Overeem. Both fighters stand and trade strikes in the center, but neither land anything damaging. Punch from Overeem fails to land. Bork seizes the chance to shoot in on Overeem. He has the takedown. Overeem pulls guard. This is not good. Overeem's got a guillotine joke, though. Off the takedown, and now turns to choke out Mike Bork. He gets it, though, as Overeem gets the guillotine fully applied, and Mike Bork taps out. So here, I thought they were going to get a, a knockout, but uh, after Mike Bork shot in for the takedown, Overeem just hooks in the guillotine and chokes him out. This is really great as uh, 4 2 for Alistair Overeem, 2 4. Mike Bork. Tough, tough for Mike Bork. 
Zalus over him gives a name check to everyone at Golden Glory, all his various sponsors, and then all of his friends, family, and supporters. As uh, our last prelim fight, Carlos Newton, the Ronin, taking on Superman, Dennis Hallman, in a middleweight division fight. Minus 390, plus 310. You can, uh, kind of surprising, you see the uh, betting odds, or Blair Cat staff have it at such a high margin. But the referee for this bout, Mario Yamasaki, he's going to look to see someone get murdered here tonight. As uh, they weighed in the same, but now uh, Carlos Newton is looking to have a significant weight advantage. As that's the opening bell. Hallman lands a left hand and then catches Newton with a right hook. A jab is wide from Hallman, then he lands a right hand. Newton may have been setting up to shoot, but Hallman aggressively took the initiative first. A punch from Hallman fails to land. A defensive jab hits home from Newton. A 1-2 from Hallman fails to land. Newton shoots in, looking for the takedown. He gets the takedown. It's a single leg, and now Hallman is uh, on his back, pulling guard. Does a few relatively weak-looking uh, right hands, says Carlos Newton. As they, oh, well, Hallman attempts to secure an arm. Cannot secure the arm, though. Newton attempts to pass guard, passes guard, but he can't seem to secure side control, as uh, now they start to scramble. Somehow, Hallman manages to come on top of Newton in the north-south position. He's looking to get an armbar, pulling free of the armbar attempt. Newton scrambles. Newton scrambles to his feet, but Hallman immediately drives him up against the ropes. Newton waits for Hallman to throw this, some strikes and quickly turns him, creating enough space to escape from the ropes. As uh, Hallman confidently moving closer, looking to throw some strikes. He uses a left jab while blocking away, does Carlos Newton. A jab is wide from Hallman, but then he hits a Newton with a straight right hand. Newton looking for a takedown again. As he gets hold of the of a leg, but Hallman remains standing, hopping on the other foot. So uh, Carlos Newton is one for two on takedowns. As with Hallman not going down, Newton settles for pushing him up against the ropes. With Hallman stuck up against the ropes, Newton looks to tries to a uh, tries to rip a leg with a sharp sweep in order to trip him to the floor. He gets it. The outside leg trip works, sweeping Hallman on the ground. As now he's, Hallman gives up his back off the takedown. That's not a good idea. As uh, seems to be moving slowly towards a finish as he applies a very tight body triangle. He does now looking for that rear naked choke. But Hallman defends himself well against the choke. As he maintains the body triangle. Halfway into the first round. Look at that fucking rear naked choke again. He gets it though. Rear naked choke. And he taps out. Dennis Hallman has lost in his debut fight pride as 19-4. Carlos Newton is 9-4. What a win for Carlos Newton. If that, that was a good little fight. Great job there for everyone in the prelims. As it didn't go to the decision like I assumed. But Carlos Newton name checks all of his sponsors. Then thanks all of his fans who turned out to support him. Carlos Newton gives a show of respect to his opponent, Superman Dennis Hallman. So now we're going on to the main card. As, uh... The Brazilian Tiger, Ricardo Arona, against Yoji, Mr. 2000, Mr. 200, rather, and Joe, looking to get, maybe, he gets a win, maybe he'll go 1-6, and six. I highly doubt it, as this is just all for Ricardo Arona to win, big job McCarthy, a referee, our ringside judges, probably in front of his hometown crowd, gets a big cheer as he makes his entrance as Yoji and Joe, that's the opening bell, as Arona looked like he was going to shoot, but Anjo simply took the initiative first, a 1-2 for Manjo fails to land. Takedown attempt. He gets the takedown. Now Rona's in half guard. Rona punches down at Anjo, but they are easily taken on the gloves. Rona pounds away with rights, but fails to land anything significant. Fires off a few punches, but they uh, are taken without uh, any damage. As, uh, then throws a few strikes with her without venom. Keeps Anjo guessing with a few quick strikes. As he throws a few weak-looking punches as he decides on his next move. Pounds away, but isn't able to land many clean shots. Pounds away with rights, but Anjo covers him up. Only a couple managing to get through. Unloads with some big right hands, but Anjo is able to deal with most of them. In half guard, Rona catches his breath just to throw a couple of punches to the body. Looking to catch his breath, Rona again content to throw a couple of punches to the body. Rona throws a few right hands as he takes a moment to plan ahead. Pounds away on Anjo, but a few sh of the shots land clean. Throws a few strikes, but it's clearly slowing things down. So this has pretty much been five minutes of Ricardo Rona just pounding the fuck out of him in half guard. As again, a few punches to catch his breath. A few right hands to the body. Look at the catch his breath. Rona's content just throw a couple of punches to the body. Uh, a few fires off a few punches as he catch his breath. No progress being made. Finally, Big John McCarthy stands him back up. As uh, Rona lands a pair of tentative jabs. Throws a quick one too, but doesn't land any blow. Take down attempt from Rona. He gets it. And now Anjo's pulling half guard. Pounds away, but Anjo's in trouble by the strikes. 
yeah, this is just gonna be a boring ass fight. That's what this is gonna be. My God, just. I mean, it's Yoji Anjo. You have a minus 1,080, and you're just not even going to finish the fucking fight. Jesus. Firing off a few punches, get his breath. He isn't troubled by the strikes. It's lands several clean blows in the process, though. There we go. And that's the end of the round. Disgusting. The last round, round two begins. Starts off the takedown. He gets the takedown. Says a few right hands to the body. And Rona keeps Anjo guessing with a few quick strikes, pounds away, and just dealing with them. He's dealing with them, dealing with them, just throwing strikes without venom. Dealing with them, quick strikes, trying to catch his breath. Body punches to catch his breath. Weak looking punches, blocked. They stand him back up to John McCarthy as a uh, one-two, but uh, Rona was equal to it as Andrew throws a one-two. And that's the end of the fight, Jesus Christ. It's your winner by Unia's position, Crowder Rona. Disgusting fight. Average. I, I, that's being modest. As that was a terrible fight. As uh, Ricardo Rona gives thanks to all the sponsors for backing him and also thanks to his family, friends, and supporters. And if you ask who he's interested in fighting next, he reiterates that Ryan Gracie is really a, a fight he really wants. There's no doubt that Ricardo Rona benefits from being interviewed. He knows the value of being building a name value as a uh, Merleo Rua, Rodrigo Gracie. As Merlio and Rodrigo starting off, Mario Yamazaki as 5-0 and for Merlio, 0-1 and Rodrigo, Mario Yamazaki referee, minus 940 for the Shooter Bucks team of Merlio, Rua, and uh, Rodrigo. I mean, this should be actually an interesting fight as both guys are pretty much have the same style besides Merlio's got the Muay Thai background with it. So, uh, either way, I think this is not going to go the distance. We shall see, though. Our judges, fight begins, touch gloves. Come up close, start wrestling in position. Rua works his way to the dominant position. He's trying to force uh, Gracie into the boy tight clinch. He does, as uh, this is not good. Using the clinch, Rua drives a knee into the chest of Gracie, but doesn't get much force behind it, though. Tries a knee strike, but doesn't connect. But uh, Gracie isn't able to get free of the clinch either. So uh, it's just kind of missed. Whiffed on it, but he gets a knee to the ribs as he misses a knee strike. Did he miss another one, or I just didn't skip it? There we go, Is as a release for the clinch, Louis looking to change his tactics. As both fighters seem to have, have the same idea, they come together in a clinch. Rua wrestles his way to the diamond position in the clinch, looking to get that Muay Thai clinch. As he's now in the Muay Thai clinch, uh, as another knee to the ribs, but doesn't generate a lot of power behind it. As uh, Rua finds an attempted knee strike caught, and the leverage allows Gracie to wrestle free of the Muay Thai clinch. As uh, both fighters get up close, start wrestling for position. Rua again finds the diamond position. Knee check to the body as they grapple. Tries to get into the Muay Thai clinch. He's got it. <laughs> as uh, now another knee to the chest, but not enough power. As uh, misses with the knee, but Gracie isn't able to get out of the clinch either. He drives the knee into the chest again of Rodrigo Gracie, but not enough force behind it. As uh, now he misses again with the knee strike, and it gives Gracie the opportunity to wrestle free. Real looking to shoot him for a takedown. He gets the big takedown, ends up in half guard. Pounds away with rights, fails on anything significant. Gracie get, tries to get full guard on Rua, but he doesn't get anywhere with it. Rides off a few punches, just catch his breath. Trying to get his leg free from the half guard. Can't get free of the half guard, so now both guys are pretty much stuck in each uh, where they're at. But uh, as Rua blocks the uh, transition, the full guard starts working to get out of half guard into a better position. He passes, he get to a uh, good side control. There, there we go. Need strikes with the ribs from under side control. Tries to pound on Gracie, but none of the blows land with any degree of power. Tries to sweep Rua, but he can't do it. Does Gracie. Tries to pound on Gracie, but all the blows come to be dealt with. Blocks the attempted sweep, and that's the end of the first round. Obviously, all. Merlio Rua has, uh, definitely has a large bruise starting to develop on his body that has got to hurt for sure. As that's the bell. Final round begins. Shoots in with a takedown. He gets it as, uh, now is in half guard. As, uh, Rua begins to get his leg free to out of half guard. He does. He gets on the side control, pounds away on Gracie, landing a few strats. Uh, laying clean shots, but not many, as he tries to sweep, but Rua can't do it. Rua looks to get mount. He tries to get to mount, but Gracie was ready and immediately starts to scramble. Rua brilliantly manages to take his opponent's back, looking for the rear naked choke, but Gracie doesn't allow the rear naked choke. As Rua blocks, the Grace, blocks Gracie, he tries to roll over, pounds away, landing several clean blows on Gracie in the process. 
increasingly increases his control by applying a body triangle. He gets the rear naked choke off the body triangle. He gets it. Rear naked choke. Makes him tap out. Rodrigo Gracie taps out as a 6-0 and for Merlio Ninja Rua. As 0-2 and for Rodrigo Gracie. 334 in the second round. And that's a decent fight as uh, Merlio gives a name direct to everyone at Shoot the Box. All his various sponsors. Then his family, friends, and supporters. As he's showing, showing respect, uh, Merlio Rua praises Gracie for his skill and toughness. As the last emperor. Fedor Melianenko fighting the Hurricane Gibbet Yavel as a minus 330 plus 260 Muay Thai Sambo background. 2 0, 20 and 7. Both guys around the same age, obviously. Uh, Gibbet Yavel's got the height advantage, though. As a referee for this bell, John McCarthy of judges. That's the opening bell. An exchange of strikes do not produce any damage. My God. As the two fighters engage, Fedor misses the right cross, then leaves them open for the counter. Yavel attacks with a jab and a low kick. Take down Tim from Fedor. He gets it. And it's a single leg, and Yavel is left on his back, pulling guard. Pounds away with rights, but Yavel covers up. Only a couple managed to get through. Fires away with punches, but only a few actually find their way through. Again, a couple of heavy shots that get through and rock Yavel as uh, he's starting to try to work to get past the guard. Yavel can't block the pass. He's left pulling half guard. Fires off a few punches that catches his breath. Look at the pass guard and gets side control. He gets side control, getting his leg free of the half guard. He tempts a Kimura. As Yavel blocks the Kimura. As he throws strikes without Venom. Tries to lock in another Kimura. As again, Yavel stops it. <laughs> Third time's a charm. He doesn't get it. Yavel fights off the Kimura attempt. As Fedor keeps uh, Yavel guessing with a few quick strikes. Looking to get Mount. Doesn't get Mount, but only because Yavel rolled over and gave up his back instead. Pans away on Yavel. Several uh, good shots land in the process. Looking to get the rear naked choke. And he fights off the rear naked choke. As he tries to move Fedor off his back, but he can't. Look at that rear naked choke. He gets the rear naked choke, and again, if, if it's gonna be, it's either decision or a rear naked choke is the way this card is going. If Fedor Emelianenko wins with a rear naked choke, three and oh now for Fedor Emelianenko. And that was rated great over the Hurricane Gilbert Yavel, who's now twenty and eight. As a Fedor Emelianenko name checks out all of his sponsors, then thanks his friends and his fans for. Turning out to support him as uh, Fedor Emelianenko says it was a tough fight and gives a show of respect to Gilbert Yavel. As are the next bout, the boa constrictor, Alexei Olenek against the Texas Crazy Horse Heath Herring. As uh, 11 and 2, 16 and 4, 24 years old, 23 years old, 6'4, 245, 6'1, 30. Uh, big advantage for, Fe for the Texas Crazy Horse Heath Herring. As our judges, the opening bell, they touch gloves, steps in. And grapples with his opponent, does Olenek. Wanting to take it to the ground, Olenek attempts to drag Herring down into his guard. The attempt is successful. Herring is sucked him down into his guard. He tries to sweep Herring, but doesn't get anywhere. Herring smothers uh, Olenek uh, with his body, but is pushing forward down. And in guard, Herring throws a couple of punches designed to keep Olenek guessing. Olenek pulls down and close, hits him with a couple of shots. Short punches to the side of the head. Herring pounds away with right hands, but doesn't do any much damage. Lennox tries to sweep from the bottom of the guard, but it doesn't budge Herring. Lennox is controlled against the ground, unable to shift Herring off of him. As Herring begins trying to pass guard and get a better position, he passes guard and he can't secure side control. As Lennox starts and scrambles for position, Herring ends up in half in guard. As uh, Herring keeps Lennox guessing with a few quick strikes, Lennox pulls Herring down in close and hits a couple of shots to the side of the head. Uh, Herring begins trying to pass guard and get in a better position. Pass attempt results in a scramble as Olenek tries to get back up. Herring ends up having to pull half guard, losing out in the scramble. Olenek loads with some right hands, but Herring deals with them comfortably. Uh, using an underhook to set up, Herring looks to set up a scramble. Olenek is too quick, though. He grabs side control before Herring can get up. We're now halfway into the round. Olenek fires off a few punches, but they aren't thrown with any great force. He blocks an attempt to pull guard. Sends a few strikes with clear throwing, slowing things down so he can catch his breath. Throws a few strikes with her without venom. As Olenek blocks Herring as he tries to transition the guard. Olenek pounds away on Herring, but doesn't do him much damage. Trying to pull guard, but uh, doesn't get anywhere with it. As stuck on the underside control, Herring takes a knee to the ribs. That's not good. As Olenek tries to hold in position, the side control hits a knee to the ribs. Inside control, Olenek catches his breath. Content to throw a couple of punches to the body. 
Aaron tries to throw, tries to turn just in the guard, but he can't manage it, rather. No progress being made. Referee Sam's back up with a minute 30 left in the fight. Or, not, not left in the fight, left in the round, as Lennox steps in and grapples with his opponent. Tries to lock his legs around the waist of Herring, waiting to pull, wanting to pull him to the floor, rather. Defends against it well, and takes control of the clinch as he attempts to wrestle Lennox to the ground. Heron can't kick Lennox to the ground, though, as he looks to it to take a trip takedown. It's unsuccessful. Lennox maintained a good, solid base. Herring trying to muscle Lennox up against the ropes as uh, he's up against the ropes. Russell's back up against Herring, turning him enough so that he could escape away from the ropes. That's the end of the first round. What a fight, though. Pretty even. As, uh, you know, pretty much from the ground and the, the stop of the takedowns, Alexa and Lennox winning this fight. That's a huge upset, if that's true. Obviously, with the ground passes, Herring's got the advantage. But other than that, the, he's got more jabs to the ground. He's stopped all the takedowns. Uh, Herring's blocked the sweep, so it's going to come down in the second round to see who's going to win this fight. If uh, Alexi Atlanta can keep it going, he's going to win this fight. As it's the final round underway, two fighters get up close to wrestling for position. Herring wrestles his way to dominant position. The clinch. Lennox gets to the complete take. He gets the takedown. That's huge. He needed that in the worst of ways. Lennox is pulling guard. As Herring fires off a few punches, but they aren't the thrown with any great force. Herring lies on top of him. Lennox basically smothering him. Smothers his, uh, uh, you know, smothering Lennox with his body by pushing forward and down. And guard, Herring just continues to throw a couple of punches to the body. As it doesn't allow Lennox to lock him up with double underhooks. Halfway mark. Look at the pass guard in the side control. He passes guard, but Lennox was ready and immediately starts to scramble. Oh, and then the scramble's got him on his back now, pulling half guard. As the uh, Lennox attempts to pass half guard and gain better position. He tries to counter the pass attempt, and then they find himself scrambling for position. As a Lennox managed to come on top of it, as uh, Herring again pulling half guard. Looking to get side control, he gets it. Since side control, looking to get mount. Wow. He goes for a mount, but Herring starts to scramble for position, ends up in side control. Lennox keeps, uh, Herring rather, keeps a Lennox guessing with a few quick strikes. As uh, it tries to pull guard on Herring, but doesn't get anywhere with the attempt. Fires away with rights, but doesn't do in a little of the way of damage. And that's the end of the fight. Uh, that was a really exciting grappling battle because, I mean, both guys were. Pretty much fighting for position either way. Uh, no one really was content. You know, obviously Herring was trying to be content and just staying on top, using his weight to his advantage. But Heath Herring was very dominant. Uh, well, not really very dominant. Both guys uh, stayed uh, par for the course. You thought it'd be a dominant performance with Heath Herring, but it really wasn't. Uh, we'll see how it goes as far as the fight metrics goes for the rounds. You see, it was pretty much all Heath Herring uh, with the takedown, the jabs. But the ground passes of Lex did his part, but I think it's going to come up short, and I think Heath Herring's going to win the fight. We'll see, though. Maybe with a split decision, but I'm going to say unanimous. Oh, we got one judge for Herring. Oh, one judge for Lennox. And the other one for Herring as a split decision win for the Texas Crazy Horse, Heath Herring. It's a decent great bout. As a uh, gives thanks. Giving thanks, rather, Heath Herring praises his team at Golden Glory, his various sponsors, and then the fans who came out to support him. Showing respect, Heath Herring praises a Lennox for his skill and toughness. It's our co-main event! It's just like that. This has not been a great card, as the co-main is up next. Andre the Pitbull of Roski against the Pitbull, or against the Predator, rather, Don Fry. As it's 11-3, 4-2, minus 3-30, plus 2-60. 6-1-2-35, We'll see how it goes. Our referee, Mario Yamasaki. Can we get a knockout? If it's going to be a knockout, this is the fight for it. Exchange of strikes sees both fighters fail to land anything significant. Two fighters engage. Flurry activity, but neither fighter is able to land a telling strike. Tries a right hook, but misses. A right hand sticking on the gloves. Two fighters come forward and engage. Fries off target with a left jab, and connects with the right hand. Lands a left jab, and also... Nails a right cross. As Fry backs off, looking extremely dazed. That last shot may have knocked him loopy. As Fry regains his senses just in time to dodge a vicious overhand right. Both fighters come together and strike. Fry scores with a jab to hit at a right cross. Arvlosky hits a jab and also hits a good right hand. Looking a bit tense, Fry moves around the ring. They stand and train in the center of the ring, but neither fighter gives or takes any real damage. The exchange of strikes, but no nothing really gets through. The exchange in the center. Arvlosky slips past the right hook and counters with a nice left hand. The exchange in the center. Fries off target with a left jab and lands a right hook. Arvlosky lands a left jab and also hits a left hook to the body. 
body shots now. Both fighters step in to strike. Fry misses a right hook and gets kind of a pair of jabs that are followed by a left hook to the body. He's getting just fucked up now. Shots to the body. Look like they're going to quickly tire Fry out. They sap your energy as the fighters come together and engage. Neither fighter means to find the target in exchange of strikes. Arvosky hit has a right hand taken on the gloves. Fry has a right hand blocked. They stand or straighten in the center of the ring, but neither fighter can land a good shot. An exchange of blows comes and goes without either fighter really landing anything significant. Both fighters come together and strike. Fry misses with a big right cross. A big right hand, rather, allowing Arvlowski to count the big right cross. As is slowing down a bit is Don Fry starting to get to the into the gas tank a bit. As we're almost, you know, halfway into the, the first round. Fry misses a right hook and gets counted with a pair of jabs that are followed by a left hook to the body. Two fighters engage. Arvosky dodges a right hand and counter attacks with a great right hook. Fry may have seriously damaged a jaw after that last shot. He steps back and try to cover up. I think he is hurt. And a big right hand from Arvosky drops Don Fry. That's a knockdown. And Arvosky uh, knows that this is a golden opportunity and quickly pounces on Fry. Look to finish him off with raining down punches. Unloads with a massive right hands and Fry is getting destroyed now. Mario Yamasaki pulls Arvosky away and stopping the fight. As you're winning by TKO, Andre Ovlowski, 5-2 and two now, as 11-4 and four for Don Fry. It's a good fight, rated as, uh, my god, Ovlowski's a bad motherfucker. As, uh, Andre Ovlowski, thanks everyone connected to the Minnesota Martial Arts Academy for helping prepare for the fight. And then his sponsors for supporting him financially, showing respect. Andre Ovlowski praises Don Fry for his skill and toughness. As our main event, Yoshihiro Takayama, now we get the Kata. We shall see how it goes. Plus 310 for Yoshiro Takayama at 6'5", 265. A big, ma <laughs> big motherfucker against Nobuyuki Takata at 6'2", 210. 39 years old, dude. This might be the end for Nobuyuki Takata. We never know. As our referee, Big John McCarthy. That's, uh, the man only big enough to stop Yoshiro Takayama if things get out of hand. Our judges. The weight advantage is obvious here. 55 pounds for Yoshiro Takayama. Both fighters. Get the crowd buzzing during the entrances. As well, round one begins, they touch gloves, exchange strikes, doesn't get anywhere. Kata uses the left jab but misses, but uses his big right hand that follows up and misses. As uh, comes in looking for the takedown, he gets the takedown, single leg takedown, has to pull guard. The Kata begins trying to pass guard and get a better position. He eventually does, only to half guard though. The Kata begins trying to get his leg free of the half guard, achieves it as he mounts the cat. Oh man, he Mounts ta Takayama to kind of unloads with some right hands, but Takayama deals him comfortably. Takata blocks the attempt to move him from mount. Takata uh, in unloads with some right hands, but Takayama deals with him comfortably. Tries to turn over and sweep Takata, but rolls too far and gives up its back. Body triangles hooked up. Oh, he's trying to get the body triangle hooked up, but he can't. Tries to turn over and sweep Takata, but can't do it. Looking for the rear naked choke. The theme for the fight, the theme for the fight card so far, it's been a rear naked choke, or a uh, decision as a uh, rear naked choke. Besides the Andre Avlowski fight, but he doesn't allow the arm to go into the chin. Tries to roll, but he doesn't budge. Takata Takayama prevents himself falling into even more serious trouble, blocking Takata from getting hooks in. Tries to roll, but doesn't budge. Takata tries to get a body triangle applied, but he can't manage it. Tries to move Takata off his back, but he can't. Lengthy period of stalemate results in Big John McCarthy standing them both back up. Takayama still moving well, but is definitely breathing a little deeper now. As it looked like he was angling the grapple, he couldn't take the initiative. Takata connects with a nice jab and hits a nice straight right hand. Exchange of strikes doesn't go anywhere. Takata steps forward, looking to strike. Steps into the pocket, showing little fear of Takayama. Takata can't connect with set of strikes, but then he scores the right cross. Clenches, he's breathing hard and main need a uh, moment to recover. Takayama tries to wrestle Takata backwards up against the ropes. Can't do it though and ends up being out, out wrestled in the grapple. Looking for a trip takedown. Doesn't get the takedown. Takayama instead wrestles his way into controlling the grapple. Tries to wrestle free but Ta Takayama controls him well and gets a few close range punches too. Clinch with Takata. Takayama looks to try and take him down. Takayama can't get uh, Takata down to the ground. We're in the final middle of the round. Uh, Takayama tries to complete the takedown, he can't get it, as, uh, 
Takata stops the taking out attempt, and he uses his wrestling to take control of the grapple. As that, Takata's looking for a trip take down. They get to the outside leg trip, sweeps Takayama down to the ground. Takayama gives up his back, looking for the rear naked choke. Doesn't allow the rear naked choke to be applied to Takayama. That's the end of the round. Obviously, all Takata so far. As we look at the fight metrics, three jabs landed, uh, standing zero on two for takedowns. Well, nobody gets the guy that's two for three, and he's got more strikes in general, but he's, uh, missed out on all the submissions, but he's got the ground passes for sure. As, uh, again, start of the second round. Takata choosing to shoot in on Ta Takayama, pulls in, and now Takayama pulls guard. Third takedown of the fight for Takata. Takata throws a few relatively weak-looking right hand. Takata doesn't let Takayama pull him close to be smothered, and guard Takata begins working the past side control. He does accidentally getting past the guard and the side control. Takata tries to lock Takayama into an armbar. He gets the armbar fully applied. Out of the blue, though, Takayama pops his arm free. Takata must have not had it locked in as tight as he looked. As uh, tight as it looked, rather. As Takayama tries to scramble, but Takata is too fast and gets side control. Takayama's breathing very hard now. As tries to chance there's a guard, but he can't manage it. Looking for a knee bar. He gets it. Knee bar is hooked. Takata falls backwards and sinks it in. And sinks it in, rather. As Takayama has to tap out. Your winner, by submission, Nobuyuki Takata, as a decent fight. This is not going to be rated good, I can already tell. As uh, Nobuyuki Takata, thanks everyone that uh, connected to Takata Dojo, following him prepare for this fight, then his sponsors, and supporting for f supporting him financially. He praised Takayama for the tough fight. He knows how to use these interviews to sell himself. As a, yeah, a critical rating of 64, just barely missed the high critical rating. Just barely got it. As, uh... If it wasn't for probably the Fedor Emelianenko and the Andre Oblosky Don Fry, would not have ended well. That's for sure. As our, our broadcast team, obviously, Steven Quadros and Boss Rutten. Our pop increase, though. So that's good. Hell yeah. Submission of the night, KO of the night, fight of the night. There we go. As we're getting the money pouring in. Hell yeah. As that will do it for episode 10. Interesting card. There's a lot of misses. A couple of hits. You know, the Roski Don Fry fight was fun. The uh, Fedor Gibbut Yavel fight was fun. Even the Carlos Newton Dennis Holman from the prelims was fun. But other than that, not a whole lot of great stuff. We signed Frank Shamrock. How about that? As so, uh, probably going to let Yoji Anjo go. We'll just uh, see if we'll do that. Um. We'll definitely sign Fedor. That's for sure. We want Fedor. <laughs> As uh, Mike Bork, it's tough, man. He's 0 for 3 in Pride. He's lost to Takata, which was fantastic. He lost to Trey Tellingman, which was good. And he lost to Alistair Overeem, which was great. He loses, but they're great fights. You know, I think we're going to give him one more fight. I think we're going to give him uh, Sataki, maybe. We're going to try to give him Sataki. Who knows? Frank Shermock, though. Signed with Frank, or uh, signed with Pride. We'll see how that goes. As everyone that we have shortlisted that's on our roster now. Don Fry, broken jaw, probably. Yep, broken jaw. All right. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll probably let go of Yoji Anjo. We'll sign Mark Bork and uh, Fedor Emelianenko, of course. It's only for eight hundred dollars too. Oh, he's not happy. Uh, two fights. Actually, a fight. Get one guaranteed fight. Mike Bork. Oh, come on. All right, you'll get two. <laughs> or we'll just cut you afterwards if you lose. <laughs> All right. So, yep, that will uh, do it for this episode as we will catch you guys for Pride 16, Beast from the East. That's Vegeta and Ogawa. Going to go head to head. That's going to be a hell of a fight. Tom Erickson and Gary Goodrich. What a fight that's going to be. And so much more. Josh Barnett and Big Nog. Awesome. Fucking Mirko Kokop and Masaki Sataki. Awesome stuff. I'm so excited for it. As we'll catch you guys there. Take care, everyone.